Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, appreciate this good number. My goodness, thank you for coming today. And um, those that are watching by Facebook or YouTube, we're glad to have you with us uh, to worship with us today. And uh, for those that are visiting, thank you for coming and being with us today. Just want to remind you that tonight, 6 o'clock, I've been uh, preaching a series of sermons on living in a world of chaos, which is where we live. And tonight I will finish that up. I, well, I got more, but I'm going to quit with that. Uh, we, I don't know, but God just said move in a different direction. So next Sunday night I'll start. If I'm living in a messed up world, and I am, if it didn't go in well, and for those that know the Lord, it isn't. Then how about me? What about me? What about Jimmy Holly living in this world? How does it go affect me? What am I going to do? That kind of stuff. Everybody needs to hear where we're going because everybody can, can feel a part of, of what we're going to say. But that'll be next Sunday night. But I'll finish up tonight living in a world of chaos and the great falling away of faith in the world that you and I live in today. But anyway, come back, be with us tonight at, at 6 o'clock. We invite you. Uh, Gary, Wednesday night, having it's, it's supper night. So Wednesday night, we're having church-wide supper. We invite you to, to come and to be with us uh, for that. We won't have regular service, and they just need to bring covered dish with you, and we're just all going to go down to the fellowship hall and, and fellowship together with one another. We need that time together. So that's that Wednesday night. Next Sunday morning, Baptist men. Our breakfast for our Baptist men next Sunday morning at 8.15, we'll have breakfast. I'll do a little short Bible study and prayer time with you. So men, boys, we invite you to come and, and to be with us for that. I want to say that uh, thankful, you know, for the, the flowers that are in the church today. Uh, these flowers are placed in the church uh, for Tim and Debbie Carroll's 46th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations on that. All right. Any other announcements that we need to make? Anyone? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for just the privilege, God, of being in this place today. Lord, the privilege of being able just to speak a few words about you. God, I pray that as we come into this place, we're going to be talking about worship in our message this morning. God never meant for his worship to be dead. That's what this psalmist will tell us. That we ought to come as we preach times before with joy and heart and thanksgiving when we come into this house. Because we've been blessed beyond measure. God, you've been so gracious and so good. Lord, you let us get up this morning. You had clothes that we could put on. We had a car that we could drive. A lot of people in the world would have given anything to have that this morning. But God, we got it. We got our health, whatever it is. So, Lord, now as we come together as, as your family, as family of Southside and the family of God, God, we want to worship you as the Bible says in spirit and truth. God, we want to give you the glory for all that you have done. And God, when I look out at all these people here, and I see the miracle every Sunday of people coming. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will move in this place today. That God, somebody, whatever they come in here in their heart with, whatever need they come through that door with, Lord, it may be a pain. It may be something they need for you to do. It may be about someone they love. God, I want to tell you, there's not a need that has walked through any of these doors that, God, I know you can't take care of. So, God, may we come and worship you, believing that you are a holy God and that there is no one like you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. All right, I want you to stand with me. Miss Lisa's going to come and lead us a little bit different. This morning we're going to sing a hymn uh, to start with. So if you'll turn to it, Miss Lisa will lead you in it. And thank you, Lisa. All right, children, y'all just come on down here, man. I got a story to tell you that probably you know, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. Y'all come on down, please. Come on. Now, last Sunday we had a thing full. Of, there you go. Come here, baby. Come on down here. I love when them little pretty girls come down here anyway. How y'all doing? Doing good? Good, good. Have any of y'all ever heard of a man named Jonah? Y'all know Jonah? Let me tell you a little bit about this man. First thing, he was a preacher. That ain't good, is it? Hmm? Is it good to be a preacher? Y'all ain't going to answer me. Y'all still ain't figured it out yet. But he was a preacher. And God would talk to him, and God would tell him to tell the people this or that the other. Well, one day, God, uh, Jonah got up out of his bed and was fixing to go, and God started talking to him. And God told him this. He said, I want you to go to a place called Nineveh. And I want you to go over there and preach to those people over in Nineveh. Well, he thought about that, about going there. Because he says you need to go because they're wicked and they're evil. And they need to know God. So I want you to go over there and I want you to tell them that story, and tell them this, that if they do not listen to you, then they'll be punished for it. If they don't listen to what you tell them, that they'll be punished. That's all I want you to go over there and say to them, and then you can leave. Well, Jonah got up, and he got to stirring around, and he thought about what God had told him to do. And this changed all of a sudden, Jonah says, I don't want to go preach over there. I don't, I don't like them people over there. So I don't care whether they listen to you or not. You do not tell God that. We should want everybody to know the Lord, God. So he just says, he just disobeys God, and he says, I'm not going over there. And so he packs his bags, and he sleeks out the house, and he goes down to the ocean. And he finds a ship down there that's 
fixing to leave. See, Nineveh was that way. The ship was going that way. So he didn't want to go there where God told him. He wanted to go away from there. So he got on the ship, and they went out into the middle of the ocean. Now, when they get out into the ocean, guess what happens? A big storm comes up. And all of a sudden, the boat starts rocking back and forth, sideways. And guess what happens to those sailors on there? They're afraid because they believe if something doesn't happen, they're going to die out there. They've never been in a storm like this. And so they begin to think. As many times as we have been out in this water, sail across this sea, Ain't nothing ever happened to us like this before. So they begin to try to think and to figure what's been wrong. What caused this storm to come when it never been there before? And the only thing that was different on the ship was what? Jonah was on there. He was the only difference from every day of their life. Now, he is down in the bottom of the ship sleeping. The storm, for some reason, is not bothering him. So when they figure out that he's the only difference, some of them go down there to him, and they shake him, and they wake him up, and they say, Are you causing this storm? Are you causing this storm? You ain't. You don't cause storms, do you? No. no. You got pretty blue eyes, too. Sometimes that'll cause a storm. You know that? Or blue as the sky. Blue as the sky. Yeah. Let me see you. Another pretty girl with eyes. You see, y'all don't. So they go down and they say, Did you do this? No, I didn't. You know, <laughs> whatever it is, I'll promise you one thing. She didn't do it. That's three times she's told me, I ain't done that. So we're good with that now. So, but he says, Jonah thinks, well, you know, he wouldn't tell them that. But he gets up out of his bed, gets his clothes on, and he says, I might be the cause of this. And he says, the only way that you can have calm to come back is if I jump off the boat out into the middle of the ocean. So Jonah knew that it was his fault because he hadn't done what? He hadn't listened to God, had he? So he packs his things up, gets on the edge of the boat, and jumps out into the middle of the sea. And he sinks. Does anybody know what happened after that? Huh? <laughs> she said he drowned. That's what I would do if I jumped out in the middle of the ocean. But I'm going to wait next week to tell you what happened to him. All we know is he should have listened to God, shouldn't he? That's right. If he'd have listened to God, he wouldn't have been in this trouble. So we always need to be mindful of what? He thought he was asleep in the bottom and God didn't know where he was at. God always knows where you are. God loves you. He knows where you are right now. Just like he knew where Jonah was. And as you grow up in life, God will tell, tell you things. Sometimes it'll be through mom and daddy or grandma and granddaddy. Sometimes it might be through a preacher or your teacher. But God cares about you, and God wants you to know the right thing to do because when you do the right thing, you don't get thrown into the sea. You get blessed. Okay? Father, I thank you that, God, you watch us, that, God, you know us. 
And Lord, I thank for the uh, blessings that, that God, even when sometimes we, we don't listen to you. And I could speak for myself and say to many times I didn't listen to you. That God, you still saved me. And so, Lord, I thank you. And you'll save Jonah, too. But God, help us to always want to do the right thing. God, as these girls grow up, and they're taught about the Bible, and they're taught about you, God, I pray that their desire will be to want to follow you and listen to what you tell them. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good? You go jump in the ocean? Hmm? You ain't? Why? You go jump in the ocean? I swim in the ocean. <laughs> Y'all are funny. You know that. I like funny girls. And y'all are funny. Pretty and funny. Be right back. Here we go. Ain't nobody here but y'all get what you want. That's all. You picked a good color. Where's the tiny one? Where's the what? The tiny one. They ain't a tiny one. Man, we don't do tiny around here. Ain't nothing tiny around here. There you go. If you ain't got a tiny one, just get two big ones, okay? All right. Okie dokie. Go with Scott. Miss Kenley. There you go. <laughs> that was cute there. That was precious little girl right there. All right. This time we're going to have our, our prayer, and then we'll have our offering hymn, and our ushers will come and take up the offering, please. Father, I thank you, God, who could never pray enough. God, nor could we ever be thankful enough for all the blessings you give us. God, we're going to sing a song that says, Blessed be the name, the name of Jesus. God, we want to bless you. God, we could never return all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But God, in these next minutes, Lord, I pray that we'll bless you with the best we got, God. Thank you for all your blessings. May you take this offering, God, and use it for your glory. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 206, Blessed Be the Name. Stand with us. How many verses? Sing all the verses. Well, that don't matter. Sing them all if you want to. We'll change them. I'll change them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Number two. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The sinners here, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the... Verse 4 now, verse 4. I never shall forget that day. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Jesus washed my sins away, 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lise. Thank you, church. At this time, our special music for this morning is going to be uh, brought to us by Brother Mark. So he will come, and I know the song is going to sing, because when I walked in here this morning to go to Sunday school, so he thought he was going to surprise me. Well, if you go surprise me, you need to shut the door. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what I did. Because I love this song. And this is one of my wife, maybe one of the top two or three of her favorite songs right here. You get surprised, her. That's good. As long as somebody gets surprised. I hope somebody gets blessed. Amen. That's right. Love you, Brother Mark. You're the technician, brother. <laughs> I'm just the one supposed to be singing. Well, God bless you. I appreciate you, Brother Ken. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? I, I think more and more as the years go by that uh, every day to be in the house of the Lord gets a little bit better and better. I, I feel like uh, there's just something in the in the air, there, there's a lot of junk going on in this world, but I think for the Christian, at least I can speak for myself, that I, f I feel like that there's a, a there's a different energy in the air because I think I think Jesus is coming soon. Amen. I really do, and um, and I and I hope that you all agree with me on that, and I hope that. Uh, if there's anybody here that's not that has not been settled with the Lord, I, I pray with all my heart that today would be the day that you would make that settled with Him, uh, because and all the all the in, unsured, insurity, what's the proper term? I'm not sure. The chaos in this world today, things are so uncertain uh, that our salvation we can be certain of. So I encourage you, if you've not done that, that you won't leave this place without being settled and that Amen. Jesus is Lord of your life um, because he can change uh, even the worst of us. So don't ever think, you know, I'm too much of a screw-up. I've, I've gone too far. I've done too much wrong because I can assure you that his grace is still sufficient. Amen. I can promise you that. This song I was gonna, I'm going to sing this morning. I'm going to try. I, I sang it years ago a pretty good bit, and it certainly had meaning to me then. Um, but as things change in life, uh, you know, there's sayings they say sometimes things just hit a little differently. So let me say that this one I had to kind of put on a shelf for a while because Y'all gonna have to pray for me because I want to sing this song because it speaks truth, but it's a tough one. Uh, but to God be the glory for it all. Amen. And uh, I hope that you are blessed. I, I can look around in this church and 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 I see faces of folks that I know 
have been struggling with things you still are struggling with things um, and you feel like you're just getting tossed about and you just don't know what you're going to do but I can tell you that Jesus is still that anchor that we can cling to we can count on him he's not going if we're his children he's not going to let us go just hang in there because help's on the way I hope you all are blessed by this y'all pray for me as I try to to do this song justice. Thank you. faith alone thy unknown and yet his eyes were watching me the anchor The ship is battered. The anchor holds. Though the sails are torn, and I have fallen on my knees as I. the anchor hold in spite of the storm They were only grains of sand.
shield is battered. The anchor holds, although the sails are torn. Well, I Man, love you, Mark. Love you, buddy. Yes, sir. Bless you. Thank you. Wow. What a song. What words in a song. If you ever been through a storm in your life where you didn't look like you have any hope of going on, God will always be with you there. Amen. If you're a child of God, ain't no, no storm that you'll ever face alone, even though it may be times that it seems like you are. But God's right there with us. He gets us through the valley of the shadow of even death. He brings us out on the other side. One thing... Again, I'll be finishing up my series tonight on prophecy and living in a world of chaos. And I'll talk about where Jesus said, there'd be, or Paul said, there'd be a great falling away of the faith in the churches. I read some stuff today about churches that will scare you to death if you love the Lord. Also tonight, special singing. John Barry and his two daughters that have have been here before and sung for us, they will, they will come and sing for us tonight. And so I'm looking forward to that, and I know you are too. So, so again, thank you for being here. Those that uh, hear me preach know that on the last Sunday of every month, I always preach a, a song to keep me uh, remembering where I am or how long I've been there. So today we're on... Psalm 103, that means I've been here 103 months. And so, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to that. And I just want to, I'm not going to be able to preach it all to you because it's just too much. But in this psalm, the psalmist tells us something about authentic worship, about real worship that should be when we come into the house of the Lord. See, true worship could sometimes show an outward appearance, but true worship will always show an inward appearance. That God, when you hear the word and you hear singing or, or preaching, that inside of you that are children of God, that, that this you know that it's real. So King David, who wrote this psalm, was a man that was praising God. Because, you see, King David was a man that messed up a lot in his life. Mark referred to that a little bit. Many thought, would have thought he ought to have been kicked out of the kingdom. Many thought his kingdom ought to be taken away from him. But he was a man after God's own heart. And the Bible says that when he confessed his sins to God, that God forgave him. And let him still be the king. That's the God we serve today. That's the God we come into this place to worship today. When David looked at God, and he looked at his life of how it had been, 
And he looked at how God had, had come into his life and what God had done for him as he looked not to the past, but he looks to the future. He says, this is what I need today. I need to praise God. Praise God. I know in Baptist churches, that's a foreign word to us, praising God. Well, some of that holy roly will get out in you if you praise God. You don't believe how many, right here in this church, how many people have asked me. Well, somebody told me that your first church was a Pentecostal church. Sometimes I wish it was. I do. But it wasn't. I've always been a dried up, dead Baptist. Until the last four years. And the closer I'm getting to glory, the happier I'm getting. And the closer I'm getting to glory, I don't mind showing it. I am so happy about what God has done in my past, what God has got for my future. I want to praise Him every time I walk through the doors of this church and say, thank you, Jesus, for an old rugged cross. That's me now. Take it or leave it. That's who I am, and I love it the way I am. My wife thinks I'm crazy. Some of you may think I'm crazy, but I love Jesus. He says in here, Psalms 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies the mouth with good things, that thy youth is renewed like eagle's wings. I want to stop there and say a few words, and see how far I get. But he says this. How many times in those first two verses do you hear him say, Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Most of the time as church people, when we talk about blessings, we talk to God and we need for him to bless us. Lord, will you do this? God, will you answer my prayer? But this is not about me here. This is about him. And he says in our lives that we ought to find time when we come into the house of God to bless the Lord. When we pray, we ought to pray. And we ought to bless God. And we ought to thank you for all he's done. That's what David does here. Lord, I want to thank you for your mercy. Everybody in here can be thankful for mercy because if we'd have got justice, where would we be at today? But because God loves me, he showed mercy to me. When I messed up in sin in my life, he showed mercy to me. And he told me that where sin did abound, that grace did much more abound. I bless his name today. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. Never, ever. In verse 2, when he says in this scripture about blessing because of all that is in me, I'm going to bless his holy name. But then he says this. Look at the end of verse 2. Forget not all of his benefits. Forget not all that God has done for us. All of us have a past. Everybody in here has a past. Sometimes the past was heartbreaking, just like that song. Sometimes... We thought we were going to seek and drown in our lives. We're never going to get any better. But the anchor holds. We just held on to God. And God brought us through that. We didn't know if we could handle it or not. God brought us through it. He said, remember God for all of his benefits. As you get old like I am and you get older and you know, retirement comes to your mind and all this. You know what you start thinking of. When you're young, you don't think much of benefits. 
But then you're going to hit a certain age where you're going to say, you know, it ain't going to be that much longer Well, I'm going to have to retire, so I've got to be sure that when that time comes that i got some benefits. With God, you always got benefits. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 90. God loves His people, and God takes care of His people. And He said, I want to just praise His name for all He's done for me. Now, I'm a happy camper in the fact that one day soon, Jesus is coming back. That brings a smile on my face. I'm going to tell you that right now. As we sing sometimes in this church, and we say soon and very soon, we're going to go see the king. And this scripture here, a little long, I might not get there, so I'm going to go ahead and reference this to you. At the end of this, it says, that my sins are going to be cast as far as the east to the west. And when we walk up into glory up there, there ain't no book that's going to come out for me and you and say, Jimmy, let me talk to you about this. No, God's already talked to you. When He saved you, He forgave you, and He put them to the bottom of the sea, the Bible says, and He cast them as far as the east is to the west. So no, I thank God for how He got me to where I am today. Everybody that's in this building, you're here today because God let you be here. You here today, it's a benefit from God. We take so much for granted in this life. And I use this maybe too often. But there's a lot of people didn't wake up today. There's a lot of people in this world that are grieving today. Because they went in there and touched grandpa, or grandma on the shoulder, and they had no breath in them. They didn't make it another day, but you did. So when you go to bed tonight, as my wife and do as we pray before we go to bed, we ought to say, God, thank you for getting me through this day. God, thank you for letting me live, putting lung, air in my lungs. I still got the blood beating through my veins. Thank you, God, that you created me and you have sustained me, and God, you have brought me here. He said, just don't forget all of his benefits. There ain't nobody... In this world, blessed more than a child of God is. This world cannot bless you like God can bless you. You can be the richest man in the world. But if God's not in that, you'll die and go to hell. Don't forget his benefits now. Don't forget who gave you what you got. If you got something, don't go around, look what I did, look what that done. You go around and you tell people, let me tell you what God's done for me. I had nothing and now he's brought me to here. One day I'm going to leave this world and he's going to take me up there. That's the benefits that I am for being a child of God today. What have I got to be unhappy about? God wants me happy. God wants the joy of my life. But there's one person who don't want me happy and doesn't want me to have joy. And that's the devil. So sometimes he'll take you back. I think everybody sometimes goes this through the tough times you had in life. And that's okay. Because he said, remember. Every time I preach a sermon like this, I, I remember about 15 to 20 years of leaning my life. Well, it was hard. We were sad. For that long, we wept and we cried. And there were probably times when I said, Lord, I can't take this any longer. Finally, we figured out we couldn't fix it. And up in Tennessee... One night there was a preacher preaching. He talked about turning it over to God. That is not an easy thing to do. Is turn your burdens and your heartaches over to God. But if you can figure a way to do that. Junior Hill, Brother Lynn will remember Brother Junior was preaching. 
And he preached about that. He said, if you're carrying a burden, a load, that's breaking your heart. I beg you and plead for you to come to this altar and you just turn it over to God and say, God, I can't do this anymore. I can't fix it. I grabbed my wife by the hand in that auditorium. We went down to that altar, and that's what we said. God, we can't fix him. So, God, we go turn him over to you. I remember that. I've got that sermon that he preached at my house. Did it happen the next day or the next week? No. But in God's time, God fixed it all. God turned it around. God let the sun rise again in our lives. He said, don't forget the blessings of God. I hope the Lord, I know my memory fades, and I can't remember like I used to, but I hope that the Lord will never forget me of the day I got saved, the day I prayed for somebody and God done that to them. I don't want to forget those things. I want to remember those things. Remember, somebody sang a song here a few weeks ago. I don't remember which one of you it was. About the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Wow. So he says rejoice. And the reason of rejoicing, he said he has forgiven my iniquities. He's healed my diseases. I believe in the healing power of God. I believe when man says it's over, I believe it ain't over till God says it's over. David said, I believe in his forgiveness. I believe in his healing. I believe, as we say, and as the Bible says, that nothing is impossible with my God. But we got to start living it Believing it, it ain't worth a dime without faith, is it? Now, normally on a normal Sunday morning, I would be here where we are now in the book of Hebrews. In the 11th chapter, a chapter about the great people of faith in the Bible. Of all their lives, what they went through, and how God took them through it. What he says, you get to heaven one day, and you get to see old Moses. I believe old Moses, Moses kind of sit down and talk to you a minute. Tell me what it was like when Pharaoh's army was behind you and they were just racing to you and you had an ocean in front of you, a Red Sea in front of you. How did it feel? Did you think you would go die then? And yet God parted that sea. God saved you. You went across there, the Bible says, on dry ground. Moses, do you remember that day? And Moses would say, I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget. There's some days that we would like to forget, but there's some days we should never forget. Never forget. And we ought to rejoice and we ought to praise God. Because it says he has forgiven us of our sins. He's healed our diseases. He has taken away from destruction. He's crowned us with loving kindness and mercy. When I see that word crowns, this is what it brings to mind to me. My father is the king of glory. There's a royal family that rules up in heaven. And one day, the Bible says that we'll receive a crown. Only those that go to heaven have the possibility of receiving a crown. And that puts us part in what? The royal family. They'd be talking about us like they do Queen Elizabeth or those dudes over yonder. They'd be talking about them. 
Because we become, when we become a child of God, we become part of the family of God. Let me see where I need to go now, because I ain't going to get it all in. Um, Verse 8. The Lord is merciful and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Let me tell you what that verse says. That God has done for us more than we can ever know what he did for us. I've told this story many times, and it's true, and I'm not going to go into it because I ain't got time. But I could take you to three times in my life where I ought to have been dead, ought to have been killed, and there's no earthly reason why I'm still here. But by the grace of God. God wasn't through with me. I don't see those are those things, brother Jimmy. I don't forget that. Those three things come in my mind. He says in that verse that God is merciful. God is slow to anger. Not only is merciful, it says He's plenteous in His mercy. Look at verse eleven. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great. Is his mercy toward who? Them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions. That's my God. Merciful, merciful, merciful. That's what it says. Every one of us will be thankful today that we're alive because of the mercy of God. That we could have been gone at any time. I lost my dad when he was a very young man in his 40s. It broke our heart. We weren't expecting that. God took him home, though. And he's receiving mercies like he never receive now and I'm so looking forward he's been gone for so long I'm looking forward to the day and I know many of you that have got loved ones that have gone up to glory when we when we walk up there and they they always tell me I don't know that this is biblical but they'll say when Saint Peter meets at the gate I don't know if he's going to do that or not I want to say to him you can take me to my place later. I want to see my daddy. Can you take me to mom and daddy's house? Of course, that'll be after I see Jesus. The next two I want to be seeing is my mom and daddy. Lord, could you take me there? And what a day, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. If we'd have got justice, now you think about, I can remember the times I got saved. I can remember, believe it or not, when we got married. That's been almost all my life there. I've been married. But it's been good, though. Oh, we had ups and downs like everybody else. We had heartbreak. We even had some spats along the way. I know none of y'all ain't never done that, have you? Y'all ain't never had no spats with one another, have you? Because, see, y'all are holier than that, I'll tell you. She went one time, worst spat we ever had. She went time three days. Three days she wouldn't speak to me. That's as bad as it ever got with us. She did lock me out of the house one time. Yep, she did. I come in too late. Door locked. Windows locked. Couldn't get in. And then a little later on in life, we had a little... But see, these things, I don't even remember why that was. In order we had them three days, she wouldn't talk to me. Yeah, she probably remembers it. You're right. And I better stop here. Yeah, I better stop here. My point is this. We got all through that. And I just remember this. Most time, if 
She and I got a little tiffy to every one another. You just kiss and you make up and you go on. And pretty soon you don't remember what it's about. If we'd have got what we deserved, we wouldn't be here today. I can also look at those bad times in my life when I was a bad boy. Not a real bad boy, but a bad boy. You know, I used to love to hang around the pool room, shoot pool, stay out. Got in trouble doing that stuff. Going by people sitting in cars and taking snowballs and wadding them up and throwing them in the car in the wind and hitting them. You know how kids did back in the 60s? Had the highway patrol come to the house one time to arrest me. But I'm still here. Now, she ain't had nothing to do with that. That was all me there. But we made it through. And I'm here. The 28th, July, 1924. All that's behind me. What did he say as far as the east to the west? God will never ask me about that highway patrol from coming to my daddy's house that night. Because of his mercy. He didn't give me justice. I want to tell you this thing about grace, the grace of God. It never fails. It never goes away. There's never come a time. So let's wrap this up. Verse 13 says, So the Father pitieth his children. As also the Lord pity them that fear him. I'm a child of God. If you're saved today, you're a child of God. And I want to tell you something. In my life, when I've messed up after I've been saved, I believe there's a God in heaven that's shared and cried tears over me. I said, I wish my boy hadn't done that. Man. The Bible says in that scripture, as a father pitieth his children, the Lord pities me. When I mess up, Brother John, he don't want me to. When I do, he don't. But mercy and grace prevail. Verse 15, as for a man, his days are as grass, a flower of the field, and it flourishes. It blossoms. Great day. He's talking about the good days, the better, when everything is going your way there. That's what he, he says, like grass. Like, hey, believe it or not, we got rain this week. My grass, for the first time in two months, is green. Why didn't I had to cut it yesterday? It's emergency when I cut it. He, he missed me. It was flourishing. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. We're just like a flower. We bloom. When the time of the season comes, we fade away. He tells us that in many places. Nobody lives forever. That's what he's saying. The Bible says it is appointed a time to live and a time to die. The wind passes over it, and it's gone. And this place shall be no more. Everybody leaves this world somewhere or another. There's a time coming when you and I, in the world we live in, this world will not exist as it is today. 
Last verse. But. Remember I told you in the Bible how I love that word but. Seems like every scripture I read, is there a chapter in it that don't have but in it? But. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto his children's children. I'm so glad that God's love is an everlasting love. And I've said this and I love this, but I mean it with all my heart. I've made some mistakes in my life and I'll probably make some more again. I hope for, but not intentionally. I don't know what I might do tomorrow, Brother Tommy. But this one thing I know, that no matter what I do, how bad it may be, the Bible says that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing. There ain't nothing I can do, no lifestyle I can live, or place I could go, or what words might come out of my mouth that might make God say, I don't love him anymore. That's an impossibility. God might weep, like I said, and say, man, I wish old Ricky hadn't said that. That's my boy there. But I still love him. He's given us so, that's what he says. Remember the benefits. Try to, that's what I'm trying to, remember some of the things God's done for you. Oh, it's wonderful to be a child of the King. I'm going to tell you that now. So as we have our hymn of invitations, we get ready to go home. There's just two questions here. Mark's already talked about them as he sang his song. The most important thing in life is having a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Because you fall into the category of everything I preached about today. The best benefits package you will ever get will not be what your company gives you, what the government gives you. The best benefits package you'll ever get is what God gives you. You can't outgive God. But if you remember... Now, I, if you read all through that scripture, let me tell you a word that I didn't say a lot about, but it's two words that are in there. Fear not, those that fear not, those that fear him, those that fear him. Honor him, love him, and respect him. That's what fear is. I'm not afraid of him, but I respect him. I don't know if there's a time I was ever afraid of my daddy. My daddy was a big old man. My daddy was 6'2", 6'3", probably weighed about 230, 240. He was a big guy. But he had such a gentle spirit about him, though. But when he walked in the room, I respected him. He was my daddy. And I loved him. I want to love God even more than that. The greatest memory, i rephrase that. I'll put it in the top two or three memories that I have in all of my life. It was the night my daddy got saved. Walked down the aisle of that church. I told you this story. I love telling stories. I tell it everywhere I go because I can't get over what God did because we prayed. We had a revival at my home church. I wasn't a preacher. I was the music minister there. Fourth night. Every night we would meet. I've told you this. My preacher and the evangelist that was preaching would say, let's go back into this room and we'll pray for somebody. 
Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, we went back in there and we prayed for my daddy to get saved. Let me show you how God works now. I told you about once I want to see him one day. Thursday night, he come in. You know how much strange it was for me to see my daddy in church? My eyes, I'm up there, lit, my eyes like popped out. He walked in, took a seat on the third row, right behind Brother Mark there. Man just got up and preached. As soon as he gave the invitation, my dad stepped out, walked down the aisle. I'm standing up here leading the music. I'm watching. My, I'm just a crying, crying, crying. And I could hear what he was saying. And he said, I want to give my heart to the Lord, preacher. And I just lost it. He got saved, got baptized, started coming to church just as faithful as anybody there. Nine months later, I walked into the kitchen one Saturday morning went over to their house and I found him laying dead in the floor. Nine months. But he knew Jesus before we left here. You know how I know? Because I'm here to tell you for nine months my daddy was a different man. My daddy was totally different. He didn't go do anything. He and I hunted and fished together and done all the things that a father and son were to do. And that's why I said, he's been gone for almost 50 years. I can't wait to see him and Mama. I want to close, how about you? Sometimes the end comes quickly, sometimes it may go on for you, may live a long time. We don't, that's something we don't know. The main thing is this. Are we ready to meet the Lord? That's the whole, that's all that matters now, folks. And the only way you know that is our Sunday school lesson I taught this morning said that you believe and ask Jesus in your heart to forgive you. Folks, that's what you got to do. That's what I had to do. That's what we've got to do. So if there's anyone here that has any doubt, you just come and let's deal with that before we leave here. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. Just say, preacher, I just want to be sure of where I stand. We need to be sure of that. And you may be here and you're carrying a big burden like Mark sang about in his song tonight. You're looking for a light at the end of the tunnel. It seems like it's taking it for a long time to get there. Come take it to the Lord and let him have it. He's the one to see you through. What are we singing? Hymn number 305. Would you stand with us, please? Let God speak to you now. If you're not certain, let's be certain. And you don't have to walk alone through this world by yourself, taking your heavy load. There's one to help you. You might be even thinking about joining the church. What a day better than today. Following Jesus.
I'm still going to follow. Come back tonight, 6 o'clock. Let me invite you. And then, of course, next Sunday night we start a whole new series. Let, let Sunday night become a part of you, your worship habit. Because the more you get, the more you're going to need in the world we live in today. And so come back tonight, 6 o'clock, as we talk about the falling away of the Bible and the church in the world we live in today. So let's go and uh, let's... Uh, have our closing prayer. Uh, Brother Kent, would you dismiss us with prayer, please?